Hey, it's Josh, and you're listening to The Other Show. So my commute is going from 45 to 50 minutes each way to five minutes each way. Like, I I... have to take four turns, and I'm literally like 50 feet away from my office. You know, Josh, that used to be my commute. Same exact neighborhood to the same exact place. And it was longer than 15 minutes, mostly because I drove past your new place of employment to mm-hmm. the Maverick half a mile down the street right. and bought a hot dog and a monster and then oh, drove the to work. Hot dog reference. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. We have a there's, quota. there's your free, there's your Wait, free hold on. space for the other show bingo. <laughs> Wait, hot dog before work? Yeah. No, mm-hmm. don't yeah me. The Bahama don't Mama Bahama rap. Mama breakfast. Well, it was a wrap. <laughs> it was like the the Bahama Mama wrap. No, I don't think that makes it any better. My indigestion <laughs> is being is flaring up because well, of that. That's why I got as big as I did, and now I eat a healthy breakfast every morning of cottage cheese and eggs and ketchup. Yeah, you're, you're. I'm out. Yeah, I, I gotta go. I think this, we lost. I, Kent. I can't be here. It's not even October. Yeah, I'm 12th. out. The f- yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, I've I've never put ketchup on my eggs. I just say it. Good. That's why we're we're friends. We're close. Would it? You know, I have other you? friends that have betrayed me. Would it yeah. offend you if I uh, told you I microwave the eggs? I was a child once too. <laughs> no, I'm an adult, and I microwave them. Here's the thing: if you do like one egg. It's too, um, like, foamy. Does that make sense? Like, the yolk doesn't do well in the microwave. The white part does. So. Do you just, like, break an egg and it's, like, over medium in the microwave? Like, what do you mean? Do you put milk in it? The best way to get a good egg in the microwave. No. Nope. Sour cream. Four eggs total, but only one yolk. And then Mm. you scramble it. That's what you're doing? That's what I do. My gosh, mm. that sounds like something my grandma would make. Um, it's great, <laughs> and it is high in protein and very low in fat and calories. But see, fat's not your enemy, though. No, I mean, that's welcome, why I have a side to of the cottage other cheese. nutrition show. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's why I have a side of cottage cheese with it. Oh my gosh, I am a grandma. Gross. I yeah, I'm you're such a grandma. <laughs> Do you do you have this an... is where I put my raisins? Does it help that I use insure <laughs> along with it too? Yeah. You're not helping your co- your cause at all. Please keep Spencer. me regular. <laughs> Actually, no, it's not insure, but it is a fiber drink. I do take Metamucil in the morning. I was gonna say Metamucil. <laughs> you've you've made that transition to grandmotherhood complete. Once again, being the youngest one on the show, but showing the most age. But mm-hmm. but I put creatine in my Metamucil. I doesn't really <laughs> do anything. I feel like that would not go well for some reason. Why not? Is it helping you work out? Is it helping you to gain a little yeah. bit? Yeah. When was the last time you saw me? Look, look, look at me. Okay, hold on. I'm I looking. I look like Burt Reynolds. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> listen. All I see ever is your face. So yeah, your mustache is nice, and I, I don't hate it. No. But I don't know if the creatine is helping with that. <laughs> Let me not just say, with the mustache gains. it's more like the dollar fifty combo Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Respect. Whoa, whoa, whoa! But it, no, hold dollar. on. But it's Sam's Club, <laughs> <laughs> the Polish dot combo, the dollar twenty five combo. I can respect that. Anyway, I, back I, to my story. Because Costco yeah, please. dollar fifty combo is because we. Peak. We we definitely got sidetracked talking about wieners. We we're we we're gonna get back to your commute. Yes. by taking the long way around. Well, so, we, wait, stopped, so you we ma- stopped at the Maverick for a wiener. It, yes, yeah. Okay. So we're still That's on track, but yeah, yeah. Wait, so Josh, what changed? So you had a f- around a fifty minute commute, yeah. and you were just an unhappy camper, and so, now it's around five minutes. So it's yeah, around five minutes. Got a new job. Uh, I'll probably talk a little bit. Of nice, congratulations more about it in the next few weeks. Because okay, sure. You know, still crossing some T's and dotting some mm-hmm. I's before everything's official. You but... don't want to count your eggs in the microwave before they hatch. <laughs> Yuck. Uh, you know, I want to make a t-shirt out of that, but at the same time, I want to fight that. So uh, this is life-changing, though, because 45-minute to 50-minute commute, 
I don't have to deal with traffic. Like yeah. I, I don't get road rage. Okay. I, I don't, I get annoyed. I talk to traffic. Spencer can attest yeah, what do to you, this. What do you do when you get really upset? What do you do? I, I he's a strong Spencer language. I can attest. Yeah. We talk uncle frequently. language. Yeah. Uncle language. Okay. Um, sure. He will say but, the same thing I said. You dick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, but see, that's not that's not necessarily my choice of obscenities or uncle language that I use. Mm-hmm. It's oh, what are your favorite words? It's a variation. Say the letters. It depends. Well, I'll say it. Jackass. Like Ma. jackass. Okay. Ma. Smart ass. Ma. Dumbass. Ma. Oh. Spencer, you're too late. I know. There's a delay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just okay. It's just so, gonna sound horrible post edit, but yeah, you know that's the extent. And and trust me, they're not really considered swear words. It's uncle language. But we had a whole family dinner conversation about what was acceptable, and calling anybody a variation of ass is mm-hmm. acceptable because you're essentially calling them donkeys. <laughs> and when you say a hole. <laughs> That's where you get kind of into the profane and the eh, I don't want to call you know somebody an a hole, but I just well, what I if think, they are though? But see that I'm I'm I get annoyed. I don't get road rage, and my wife right now is probably rolling her eyes like, "No, you get road rage." I'm like, "No, that's not road rage. That is ta- I talk to traffic. Like I'm like, all right, come on, jackass, get over. I'll let you in." And I'll let people in. I don't play that whole stupid game of like I'm like I'm speeding up to make sure that you don't pass me, which happened yeah, this morning. I that. Oh, I'm like, dude, like we're ge- we're going to the same place probably. Just uh-huh. let me yeah. get over. You know, it's I'm not spitting on the grave of your grandmother, right? It just let's <laughs> let's just be adults here. But now that you know, essentially I have four turns to work. I don't know what I'm going to do with that, that angst, that, that I, 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 well, I don't, I wouldn't say rage, but I need a new cause in life. I need something to kind Wait, of Wait, you, you want something to be mad at or do you kind want of, to use I, this? Okay. I, I Can I need make a to... recommendation, Josh? What's that? Go to the Walmart on a Saturday. See, and, and <laughs> yeah. no, actually, I I think the place and I, I think I found it today is Costco because there yeah. is nothing that annoys me more than anything at Costco than rolling up to a parking spot and somebody leaves their stupid shopping cart there because they don't want to walk it over to a shopping cart corral. And they just leave it. Now, granted, Costco doesn't do a very good job at making those corrals very accessible. Because especially if you park pretty close to the store, I think they just kind of expect you to bring it back. Mm -hmm. So you get those shopping carts stuck all over the aisle or they just leave them right in the stall next to you. So anyway, this morning or this afternoon, I pretty much i think i got a part-time job at costco because i got so annoyed i started bringing the shopping carts to the corral i brought probably about six or seven shopping carts (laughs) with me like i was waiting for somebody did you get to the point where you were you had a row in front of you and then some lady's like oh here this one too (laughs) yeah honestly i was waiting for that but honestly i like i didn't mind it because i don't this no, I haven't. Why? I, I mean, are you saying that I need therapy for this? Or are you saying that I should probably... No, I had a conversation with Blue about this exact thing. And, mm-hmm. and explaining, we, we talked about how with our daughters, mind you, his is much older than mine. Mm-hmm. When our daughters start dating somebody seriously, I want Hazel to take her boyfriend or her potential partner to the grocery store to see if he puts away a cart. It is the most simple form of responsibility and caring and thinking about others Mm -hmm. that you can do. And if they don't put that cart back, then you got to reconsider. Okay. Hold on though. 
I can't wait for you to get there. And she's like, Dad, I think I love him. And you're like, well, have you done the cart test? And she's like, no, not yet. Tell me how. And then she goes to the store with a boy that she loves, Mm -hmm. even though she's only 17 years old and, you know, she doesn't know anything about love. (laughs) And he doesn't put the cart away. Do you say he's not he's not welcome in this house anymore? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) And then she'll run away for good. Mm -hmm. And then she'll become someone that doesn't put her cart away. Look, she doesn't need to break up with him. There'll be a small farm accident. She doesn't need to know. Oh my gosh! <laughs> but see, no, here's the thing though: is the remedy for this is so easy, especially for the shoppers. If you hate taking the shopping cart back, you know what you do? You park right by a shopping cart corral. So when you're done, all you have to do is walk oh. a stall or two away. And you're no, done. that's not an option at Costco because you just got to find a spot where you can. But still, here's the what you got to do: just, just do buy a dollar fifty combo, and that's it. If you don't buy anything else, you can eat the evidence Listen, on the way out. Just do what I do and ride the carts like they're a giant scooter. <gasps> it's true, and it's super cool, and you look cool too. The, the things you, know? you try there, it's a little yourself. dangerous. The things they you get make, a little back heavy yeah. if there's no groceries in there. But worth it. There's nothing yeah. cooler than a dude in his Kirkland Signature shirt, Kirkland Signature cargo <laughs> shorts, and now Kirkland hey. Signature walkers and socks. Oh, my gosh. And, like, and Pumas. Actually, like, okay. They Let's sell tennis show. shoes now. Let's do a show okay, and tell. show and tell since we're on a podcast. Okay, so I have my – I've got my Costco socks on. I also have my Costco shorts and <laughs> – well, I didn't get my garments at Costco, but you know. You got to get warm in Costco. Yes, I did. I mean, that's what the distribution center is. Des book. Uh, what about you, Spencer? Do you have anything on Costco? Are you are you Actually, wearing Costco today? Is no. this show just brought to you by Costco? <laughs> Goodness. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Spencer's actually Wait, wearing so, a dollar got, fifty combo. A work shirt and uh, pajama pants from Walmart. So, Josh, uh, mm-hmm. how does your wife feel about the job change and specifically more time at home because you want to be commuting as much? She loves it because I mean, she works yeah. mostly from home. So it just it frees up like almost, you know, two and a half hours a day. So, I'm so the- were you the spouse that would you're the one that has to get up first? Mm-hmm. Get in the shower. Bye, babe. Love you. Yep. All that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Kiss on the forehead. See you later. And she's yeah. She's still asleep. She rolls out of bed for her nine o'clock meeting. Doesn't yeah. turn on the the camera. So you know. But oh, I've, I've to, been there. Yeah, I've been there. I love it. And, <laughs> and there are some days. You know, maybe she's gonna kill me for this, but there are some days where I come home and I'm like, oh, you're still in your PJs. Okay, and <laughs> hey, there is nothing wrong with no, that. No, there's shame. no Do shame after shame the comfort. pandemic. No, I was going to say there's. Comfort. I should say, like, there is no shame because I wish I was in that situation, right? Okay, so it's jealousy. That's where oh, you're yeah, coming totally. from. Oh yeah, totally. And uh, so, just having that extra time uh, is is just going to be life changing as well. Because the commute yeah. just, I mean, it just sucked. And you know, even when I was taking the train into work i mean that was still an hour each way so i mean taking the train into work an hour each way that's two hours that's enough time to listen to a subpar podcast but now your new commute you can listen to one good podcast (laughs) that's 10 minutes long yeah i was gonna say i'm like i don't know other other shows only 10 minutes oh actually yeah that is a good Ah. Eh, well i'll give you that one Doing the happy dance. Oh, he's, he's so proud. But no, it's uh, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a great change of pace. It's gonna be a faster yeah. environment for me. And like I said, I'll probably talk a little bit more about it in the future. But something that definitely goes with my skill set. It's more of a marketing kind of job, and I'm I'm just excited. So my first day is next week, and yeah. So I'm excited for you. I know where okay, it's Okay, well, congrats. Maybe I, I, maybe I should bring them a cake on the first day. Do you think I should? You should. You should. Because I did give a cake to my coworkers when I put my two-week notice in. I think you should. I mean, and? Is there, is there etiquette on that? Like, do you bring something on your first day? You bring like, No, a, don't be... The, bring a good attitude I'd and say, willingness to get to work. 
Right. I think bringing a cake, it's like you're, you're causing too much of a scene. I think you want to be welcomed, but not be that guy. Okay. Right. Not be like, oh, yeah, this is how this guy, he's not going to fit in here, is he? So I should return the streamers, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the jetpack. Yes. For sure. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while since I've had a first day at work. So. I don't know. It's it's kind of exciting. Like I feel like I need to go on another shopping spree to JC Penney because yeah. I need a whole new wardrobe because they basically yeah, they basically got my interview my in, my interview outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's JC Penney that you're going to. Oh yeah. Well, ma- mainly because I haven't found a Kohl's down here yet. <laughs> Hey, Alexa, tell us a story about the subscription fees. Because. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, whose who's Alexa was that? That was your Alexa. I thought I changed the name to computer. Alexa, stop. <laughs> yeah, what was she going on about? I don't know. I don't. Okay, for to start off this rant really quick. Does any, Do you have an Alexa kit? No, I have. I had one. I don't keep it plugged in because I just don't. I, I, I feels, care about my privacy a little bit. It feels so weird because it's always listening. Always yeah. listening, as we just saw. Like, you're you're having. She's right behind you, Spencer. Mm-hmm. Listen, so you're having. I say that my phone listens and takes a uh, picture yeah, every 20 seconds, too. True. So, I mean, whatever. That's true. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't look like a $1.50 combo Burt Reynolds. Right there, just a, a glance, you look like a $1.50 combo Ted Lasso. Hmm, I'll take Ooh. that. I was actually yeah. beginning to think I look like the dad from Mary Poppins. No, don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Banks? Yeah, Mr. Banks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what's going on with Alexa? Amazon Moles, 5 to $10 monthly price tag for Alexa service in AI revamp. So right now, Amazon execs are pissed. I, I shouldn't use that because I hate when people say that. Like, oh my goodness, people are pissed. The Alexa market and executive <laughs> slam the unproductive and undervalued Alexa market. No, Alexa executives, Amazon executives are mad because they want more money. Who doesn't want more money, right? And they need more money at Amazon. They think they do. I mean, have you seen how terrible the quality of Wheel of Time is? Maybe they could invest in that <laughs> instead of another yacht. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, so with Alexa, just like everything else, the in. Stephanie, please forgive me for my language and what I'm about to say. It's called inshittification. Okay? You should not apologize for that kind of word. That's actually pretty cool. Boards of kind of brilliant. Will you say it? Boards of directors, inshittification. Boards of directors and investors try to squeeze every last dollar out of everything so that you always have revenue coming in. That's why everything is moving to a subscription service these days. You can no longer just right. buy your Amazon device that I shall not name because I don't want it to turn on and they get the sure. profits from the sale of that. They now need to charge a subscription fee and they're mulling 5 to $10 a month to use anything beyond the most basic of Alexa commands such as, hey, Amazon device, please set a timer <laughs> for five minutes, which it doesn't even do 90% of the time anyway. So every time my food gets burnt. I love that you say that, or just the way that you said that, and you look back making sure that you didn't trigger her. (laughs) I don't want to trigger her. And I said the light turn on. She's Mm going to kill me. Like they're listening. But that's what it is, is they're they're looking at ways to squeeze more money out of, uh, because, you know, they haven't already cornered the online e-commerce market. They need to figure out how to squeeze more money out of you by charging now $5 to $10 a month to use a device that you already bought. Are people using um, uh, Alexa? Sorry, I said that out loud. Are people using the uh, Amazon electronic device as much as they think? Because, like, I remember the commercials were like, you can order groceries just by speaking it. You can uh, set your home lights or whatever. Yeah. Like, are people using it for more than really just using it as a Bluetooth speaker or setting a, a timer? Not really. And that's the thing is no. people are using it to, say, play music or turn mm-hmm. off the lights. Yeah. They'll use that for that. I mean, we have yeah. a set of turn-off lights, I think, even in this room. But Try beyond it. that, like, it, it. that's why it's been, Alexa, turn off Do the it. lights. Ooh. Oh. 
Oh, it got. Okay, so what are Spencer, she's right behind you. <laughs> now, now you're setting the mood. Actually, watch this. Alexa, turn the lights to red. Oh, not this light. That's the bedroom lights. Whoops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie's in there. What? Spencer? <laughs> She's freaking out. Hey, I thought he was recording. I didn't know it was sexy time. We don't restrict what you can say or sing on here, Kent. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm safe to say Alexa, though, in this household because I have a niece Alexa, and it got annoying the first week of marriage when we would talk about her. So we have Echo. To your point, Kent, are people using it for anything beyond those most basic commands? Not really. And that's why they want to start charging money to unlock better well, features. But why would someone pay even $5 for something that like a very small amount of, pop of the population would actually use? So right. One like, I don't get what if they think it'd be successful. So one of the, the uses that they do notice people actually use Alexa for, dang it, I said the name, um, is to ask <laughs> questions. So like, hey, what's five plus five? Or how many tablespoons go into a cup? Things like that. So they're integrating AI into the device so that it can give you more accurate and more in-depth questions. Or you can ask mm -hmm. subs subsequent questions like, how many tablespoons are in a cup and how many ounces are in a tablespoon? And it'll answer all of that. But one of the things you're, we're, we're learning with AI and how it's been integrated into like Google is it's giving the wrong answer a lot of the time. McDonald's yeah. recently tested using AI to make suggestions in the drive through and it was making suggestions like putting French fries and bacon in your ice cream cone. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. For you. Okay, I, so, I mean, not McDonald's bacon, but go on. Yeah, so like putting bacon or or even like saying, hey, would you like some ketchup on your Egg McMuffin? Oh, okay. That's, See, that's not crimes true. against humanity, things like that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the, it, this begs the question is, would you be willing to spend five to ten mu bucks a month to unlock more functionality you don't want to get worse answers than you're currently getting? That's a, that's a no. We all know that we're being taken with subscriptions and they keep going up. Like it may start at five dollars, and everyone's like, "Hey, might as well. It's part of life. It's fine." But then it'll be seven dollars, and then it'll be Netflix prices. Like nobody wants this. Well, you remember when the whole reason streaming was amazing is because you it was way cheaper than cable. Yeah, Hulu Live costs right? ninety eight bucks a month. What? Are you kidding me? Ninety eight bucks a month for Hulu Live, mind you, that gets you like all the channels. And it sure. gets you Hulu yeah. and Disney Plus and ESPN Plus. But it's the same how, price as cable. So then how, you know, if we can cut the cord on cable, how do you cut the cord on streaming? Arr. Yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. But no, seriously, like I, <laughs> and there, there's no need. Like the whole reason why I would want to do streaming is because I don't want all the channels for cable. That's just that's just dumb. I I don't know. I'm I feel like I'm turning almost into a boomer sometimes because it's just there's just yeah, too we're much there. out there. I like I don't need everything. I don't need all of this. Okay, <laughs> Amazon, no green light. You can't do it. Anyway, Spencer, what else you got? Okay, the other news story. We've got a lot of news stories this week. We do. I'm gonna read you this article, and then I want you to tell you tell me. It's kind of like a, a am I the rooster? Okay, but I'm going to read the article, and you're going to tell me your your opinions and thoughts on this individual who is a victim, by the way. Okay. Um, and this was big news in London. I'm sure you've heard of this. Ian McKellen fell on me. Sobbing theater goer 30 reveals how legendary actor landed on her as he fell off stage before staff made shaken fan book her own taxi home. A theater goer has revealed she too ended up in the hospital when Sir Ian McKellen tumbled off the stage and landed on her during a performance this week. Joanna Dart 30 from Weatherhead, Surrey had got front row tickets to see Sir Ian in a production of Player Kings in the Noel Coward Theater on Monday, June 17th. But during a fight scene, the 85-year-old Lord of the Rings actor lost his footing and fell into the front row where Mrs. Dart was sitting. 
I mean, I've seen him fall before, but that was to literally the depths of Middle Earth. Well, yeah, and he fought the Balrog. Yeah, I know, fought the right? Balrog and returned. Uh, as... did, you, did you know that's why uh, he fell on her at the bottom? He so returned to Sir Ian McKellen. That's why White. he was able to come back. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking to the BBC today, Miss Start said, Getting crushed by Gandalf the Grey, that's something you don't expect. She said it was an unforgettable encounter, but not one she necessarily wanted to have with the acting legend who was playing John Falstaff in the production. Mrs. Dart was helped to the foyer by two women who could see she was in distress before doctors saw her condition and came to provide care. She was later taken to the hospital with soft tissue issues. She told the BBC she went into shock about the whole thing and had been enjoying the production until the scene where Sir Ian fell. Uh, recalling the incident, Miss Dart said the actor appeared to trip on a bit of his prop. The staff rushed to help Sir Ian, who said it was he was recovering, who was said to be recovering very, very well. But they did not adequately respond to my injuries or my state of shock. She told the BBC staff that initially seemed unsure of what you the health and safety in the protocol Lord of the was. Rings. And what did not provide <laughs> assistance on well we'll get to this but i'm just saying if an 85 year old fell on my knees from at least six feet up i'd be more worried about the 85 year old while they did eventually come to raid miss start said they did not direct any of the paramedics who had arrived to treat sir ian to assess her injuries she went on to say that the staff took her to told her to book her own taxi home despite being in shock and in tears Miss Tart traveled home with her brother before her mother, Angela, joined her in a taxi and they went to the Epsom Hospital, where she had to spend all night in the hospital's emergency department. Ticket holders were evacuated at the theater at about eight and the shows that evening had been canceled. Sir Ian, who plays John Falstaff in the play, was circling a battle scene involving Prince of Wales and Henry Percy when he tripped and fell off stage. Charles Johnson, a journalist for the Kingston Courier, who was in the audience, told ITV as we approached the interval of the play, there was a fight scene going on. There were strobe lights, and then it went dark, at which point you could see the silhouette of Sir Ian come out of, from the wings. And the way the stage works, and then a little coward, is there's a sort of step down just as the stage meets the audience. I think what happened was he put his foot too far and sort of went off that initial step, at which point he lost his balance and pretty much went head first into the audience. And within okay. seconds, a blood curdling scream arose from the actor. He was clearly in a lot of pain. He was screaming, "Help me!" Okay, we get it. He fell. Okay, this sets up <laughs> this week's Josh poll. We want to know what actor do you want to fall in your lap? Can we answer right now? Yes, go. Like, yeah, you, you go first, Kenny. I'm, it seems like uh, you want Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> No, actually, Kevin lately Bacon? she's too bony. Kevin Bacon? Uh, he will be. He's coming to town. I'm going to go see him. Oh, you the Bacon are. brothers are coming to town. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I'm going to not try to be a typical guy and say something like Sydney Sweeney. Can I have Samwise Gamgee? <laughs> you want Sean Astin to fall into your lap? Yeah. Or Samwise Gamgee, the I character? Do. No, I want Sean Astin. <laughs> I want to talk to him about all of his roles. I want to talk to him about Rudy. I want to talk to him about Goonies. I want to talk to him about Ninja Turtles. You just want to catch him and say, you're my Sam. Yeah. Who wouldn't? <laughs> you know, I, I kind of, obviously I'd want to say like Henry Cavill, but I feel like he would really break my legs mm -hmm. if he fell. Yeah, he can do some damage. Me, so that's kind of tough. Yeah, definitely not the new guy because he's like skin and bones. The new Superman with his crappy suit, but. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll get fixed in post-production. That's what they told me anyway. Okay. Yeah, that's what they told you. Oh, Josh, who's your who's your celebrity? This is the uh, weirdest poll ever. Mine you would, want would to probably in. be Julie Andrews, circa nineteen sixty six. So not even only though, you're going back in time, even though so there's a time machine yes. that op a, a vortex opens right on top of you. It's, she falls because um, he hits her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how we go back in time. Um, but you know, I would actually would I wouldn't mind you know eighty eight year old julie andrews to fall into my lap but i mean circa 1966 julie andrews would be my my peak julie is, well, is she peak oh yeah sound of music Josh. mary poppins she was at the top of her game speaking of 88 year old julie andrews that brings us back would you sue the time machine company for causing you distress and pain because they dealt to her injuries before your injuries no. So I take it this this lady is suing the she theater. She is suing the theater because she felt they did not respond or adequately re 
meet her needs and her distress. Okay. So who's at fault here? Well, should uh, they have accidents? It? The strobe light. Well, they company, definitely the strobe light. Company. They should have. Mm-hmm. They should have definitely. Yeah, maybe the strobe light company. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Josh, we've definitely almost had some accidents with strobe lights in the past. Yes. The lazy eye comes out and it's just all chaos. No context. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say that the theater should have gone out of its way to really cater to her and been like, hey, we got free tickets for the next three shows. Like, we can't believe that happened. You know, thank you for breaking his fall. But at the same time, like, we'll take care of your bills. Um, But just please come back. We'd love to make it up to you. Like, they could have tried harder. Clearly, she just feels like she was not seen. I mean, and that's fair, but... They did try to take care of her after they attended to Ian McKellen, the 85-year-old. Yeah. And some people are just so happy. And maybe that's her. I mean, it's gotta be. there's a radio DJ out there right now who probably thinks I'm so <laughs> happy because she hit me with a car. But, you know, whatever. Listen, everyone thinks you're talking about someone else, Josh. <laughs> we thought said we settled this, Josh. <laughs> this is settled law. And by the way, the other saying. person's not a radio DJ. <laughs> It, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Hasn't been for a while. Okay, anyway. speaking of speaking of law, huh? Eh? Uh-huh. I have a, I have an article. This comes out of Florida, Josh. I thought about you when I saw this one today. Ooh. Um, I know you're Meth a big fan. It's close. It's so close. We saw a movie last year, early last year. It's called Cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear. Uh, apparently, Cocaine Bear has made his way into legislation, <laughs> and I don't know what? why or how, because I thought this was a joke article, and you know, th- w- here we have it. So, out of Tampa, Florida, Figures. Governor Ron De- yep, yep, Governor Ron DeSantis signed mm-hmm. a bill on Friday that makes it legal for people to kill crack bears in self-defense. <clears throat> Does he know that <laughs> it's not real? It's not like- real. <laughs> Like, no, you he... have to, <laughs> before you can kill the bear, you have to wait for the blood work to confirm that it is on meth or crack <laughs> or cocaine. And then you or can shoot salts. it. Or bath salts. And then I you wanted... take an adequate measure of a defense. So here, I'm, I'll go into the article. Yes, so please. a person can use lethal force against a bear as long as they believe that they, their pet, or their property are in imminent danger. So kind of like concealed carry, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If someone is breaking into your house, your property, I mean, you can quote unquote. It's Florida. St- yeah. Stand your ground to cocaine bears. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but clearly you can't lure a bear with food or other attractants like to cocaine. your property or, or to your, <laughs> like cocaine. It's Florida. All the cocaine bears are just gonna show up to your house everybody has cocaine I'm, there right? i'm just gonna set a little trap up like a lemonade stand but it's gonna look like uh a, a scarface's house <laughs> <laughs> so there's this representative's name is jason shof and he's he says in quotes they break your door down and they're standing in your living room growling and tearing your house apart like he introduced this ba- this bill which is called the cocaine bear bill um, and I just don't, I mean, in when, once, if you do use lethal force against a bear, you have to notify the fish and wildlife conservation commission within a day of killing the bear and they have, they get to dispose of the body. No, like you I'm, can't keep it or I'm anything. I'm dumping that thing in a swamp. If I I'm love... killing a cocaine bear. It's going in a swamp. I love that though. You have like a whole day, like you got this dead bear sitting in your, your, uh, your front room. Like weekend at Bernie's first. <laughs> like, well, here's the thing: we got here's 24 hours with this sucker. What kind of fun can we have? Carpool lane. <laughs> <laughs> we is weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Bernie's. Ah! Uh, I've been to Florida one time, oh, and I the, don't remember. Like that's the sequel we need. Is weekend at <laughs> Bernie's. <laughs> Bernie's. <laughs> That's also the title of this episode. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't remember a lot of bears being down there. And please, someone tell me if there are bears in Florida that walk around neighborhoods. I feel like people, the issue I think is people are finding bears. They're getting, they're trying to hunt them down, maybe even in neighborhoods or backwoods, whatever. And then they're probably throwing cocaine into the mountain and probably from the movie. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, yeah, I killed, I killed this bear. He was on drugs. He was asking me for drugs. He wanted the junk. 
and they basically shoot them up to make it seem like the bear is on drugs the, so that they're protected. Only bears that I can think of in Florida are either at the zoo or in Orlando at the Magic Kingdom. And they're Uh-oh. dressed the up in a suit Uh-oh. and they're yellow. Like, realistically, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh could be on cocaine. You just know he's, that somebody... He's bumping lines between appearances somebody, in 100 Acre Woods. Somebody's showing up at Country Bears. They're going to completely destroy one of the animatronics. <laughs> and then they're going to be on the phone with law enforcement. Say, I just killed one of those game, game bears. It I was killed bear. singing and I killed it. <laughs> <laughs> now I'd owe like five, ten grand to Disney. <laughs> he was looking at my sister real funny, and he was on drugs. So listen, this and it's Florida. The Florida Senate passes twenty-four to twelve. The Florida House passed to eighty-three twenty-eight. Like this passed, and it's ridiculous. And so there is a change.org petition if you'd like to sign it. It currently has forty thousand signatures because we all know those petitions do really well. Mm-hmm. Save the cocaine bears. <laughs> actually actually there are real bears in florida i just uh googleized just this. google it okay please do share there is the american black bear which i mean it's, it's an american black bear but there's also a florida there's actually a florida black bear so don't know what the difference is other than cocaine ones yeah probably yeah actually probably uh but yeah there's two types of bear that you can find in florida so yep American black bear is as American as apple pie, and the Florida black bear bumps lines off of a stripper's butt. I could just see it now. Like a couple guys are having the party with uh, with uh, Bernie's Bernie <laughs> before, and and Bernie actually gets into some drugs. They're like, "Oh no, you're going to get killed. They're going to hunt you. It's going to be like the purge." And so they try to make him look like a human that's on drugs, just so people don't hunt him down. I love this idea. I love this premise. <laughs> This is the kind so he's of, not dead yet. <laughs> this is the kind of entertainment that we need in America today. Yeah. Good, wholesome, family value entertainment. Yeah. Doesn't get more the American. The bear who accidentally. <laughs> or Forden. I'm actually pretty sure. I, I'm, I'm at least 75% sure that the, the senator that introduced this bill was maybe bumping a few lines before he went to go see Cocaine Bear in oh, theaters. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And he's or like, this is real. I think you're right. This is happening in my house. Yeah, he, he definitely, it was definitely a paranoid induced. Bill. No, his, his final quote, this is the show guy. Mm-hmm. He said in front of Congress down there in Florida, in quotes, when you run into one of these crack bears, you should be able to shoot it. Period. That's <laughs> like. What world are we in? Because like the the one bear that was on cocaine died because it was on cocaine. Like yes. pretty quickly too. Pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, now I'm, I'm here. I can just picture like here's people the thing. Going there are no weed bears apparently. That's yeah. True. Well, that's because they're chill. Yeah. They're just yeah. eating honey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a gateway bear. Yeah. It's... <laughs> the worst care bear ever. <laughs> Or the he's, best he's, hair bear he's, ever. Hair bear stare, and he's just staring at you. <laughs> Bloodshot like eyes. Three hours. No, he's not staring <laughs> yeah. at you. He's staring at the wall for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> and scare bear stares just flashing someone because it's in Florida too. <laughs> All right, I think we have a phone call, right? <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Hey guys, proud Disney mom here. I think most everyone here knows that I'm turning the big 5-0 pretty soon, and I wasn't sure what to do for my birthday, but I decided to do the really, really crazy thing, and I'm going to Florida. I'm going to go to Disney World. Why not? (laughs) Um, My daughter actually is able to get us some tickets to go to the Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, so we're going to do that in the August, August heat and just have a great time and have some magic and just I don't know I'm so excited I'm so excited to go see her to go have some fun for my birthday I've always wanted to do the Mickey's not so scary Halloween party so I'm so excited to finally get to do this yeah it's going to be August it's going to be super hot but you know what I've been in August before we had so much fun we make our own magic right that's how the world works 
So anyway, I'm so excited that I get to spend the big 5-0 with the big mouse himself at his scary Halloween party. Well, not so scary Halloween party. And I get to spend it with my daughter. How great is that? Like, life just does not get much better than that. So anyway, thanks for letting me share, guys. Bye. Okay, just one bit of advice. Don't dress up as a cocaine bear. Don't do no. it. Don't do no. it. <laughs> and if winning Josh, the poo, you could have been killed if you were in Florida. Oh, man. Oh, that's true. I've never been so close to death since hey. I almost got hit by a car. Is that why Winnie the Pooh doesn't wear pants? He <laughs> thinks he does. Yeah, he thinks he's wearing pants. <laughs> Listen, Tanya, when I say that when we were listening to your call that we started busting up, <laughs> it was the best segue oh. ever. I don't, Thank you I for that. I don't think that we could have ever asked for a better segue. <laughs> 100% <laughs> but not But genuinely, yeah, it's going to be a great trip, but now we're a little worried. Yeah, so please, please, whatever you do, no cocaine bear costume. And don't take what the poo is offering. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but no, I, I'm excited, though, for you, and congratulations on yeah, the big 5-0. I know that's a Obviously, we want to see pictures as well mm -hmm. from the not so scary halloween party and you yeah. said it was in august right so i that's what it sounds like I, yeah I, for, I forgot that they start their halloween stuff like in august and disneyland is starting to do theirs in august as well and awesome. just to kind of throw this in there i i also just saw recently that the honda mansion just announced that they're going to be reopening with all their changes in their their new queue and everything on August 23rd. So, oh, uh, by the way, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have been reading stuff about Epic, which is Universal Studios Florida Park. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's got I've the Hadron Dragon I've... World. Yeah. So, they, they it's going to be incredible, Josh. It's uh, later next year. Mm -hmm. They said they're going to launch it, but it's just going to be nuts. So, maybe I'll go in 2026. But uh, I specifically want to talk about the Universal Monsters World. Oh, which they're saying this. you're like they're making a world of that that's so strange they're saying this is a halloween kids dream this mm -hmm. is this place is going to be so themed and so cool which is funny because it's not really a relevant thing to modern audiences but i'm stoked and also dragon drones at burke for how to train mm -hmm. your dragon mm -hmm. i can't freaking wait i hey, never is... thought i would live in a world where universal studios has been doing better theming than disney well, I mean, it happened with Hogwarts, and then Disney tried to step it up with Galaxy's Edge. And they dropped the ball, and then yeah. Universal doubled yeah. down again with Mario World. Well, I mean, they're, yeah. they're going to be putting oh, they're killing it. billions. And there's a reason why Disney has announced that they're going to be putting billions of dollars into Walt Disney World, which should finally... Oh, they still are. Oh, yeah. It, which should finally get okay. their fifth gate, the long-rumored fifth gate, which will be interesting to see what they do, because... They're, they're going to have to match kind of what Universal's been doing. So it'll be interesting, but mm. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I'm not sold completely on the Universal stuff. I mean, yes, they... I'll, I'll send you more info. Okay. They're going to kill it. And the roller coasters are second to none. I mean, I mean, sure. I know Cosmic Coaster is pretty great, but you have Velocicoaster mm -hmm. at Universal. It's just going to trounce it. And sure, it's not the the family kind of place you go to, like Disney World. Mm -hmm. But but what about I it's, think it's not just the roller coaster, so it is the the theming and mm -hmm. the interactiveness yeah. of the world. Like with you mentioned Harry Potter Land, you can walk around with your wand and use your wand as you're you're walking around. With Mario World, they have little like question mark boxes you can hit and and earn things and like interact with the world like Mario does. And that, that's something I think show Disney's up? been sorely missing. Will oh, people show been. up though? Do you think so? It, oh, absolutely. Have you? They do. The crowds for Mario Land have been crazy, and they've, they've actually had they've had an issue with the Toad's Cafe because they they sell a a soup. Like, people people can't stop licking the toads. Is that the problem? <laughs> no, that's Florida, and you can shoot those toads. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well played. Thank you. Uh, but Toad's Cafe, they have a, a soup that you eat. Like, it's in a mushroom of Toad's head. And people mm. were stealing the bowls. So they just started selling the bowls with the soup and including it in the price. Oh, okay. Perfect. That's smart. Yeah. Like, they just oh. rolled with it. See, uh, okay. So, maybe, I, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm just too much of a Disney homer when it comes to that kind of stuff. Because 
generally speaking, you know, outside of what the past four or five years, whatever Disney kind of builds and puts out there is successful. And it seems like other places out there uh, it's kind of hit and miss. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens. So in... And I'm just going to go through these for you real quick, Josh. So, and this is in Florida currently, and they're going to do some things, but always it's smaller in California. Mm -hmm. But so there's Dark Universe, which is so funny because they try to launch the Dark Universe movies Mm -hmm. with uh, The Mummy, like what, 2018 or something like that. But they're going, they're full tilt going into that. Super Nintendo World will grow. It, mm-hmm. They have one in California, but it's much, much bigger in Florida. And so they're expanding that because it's huge already. There's the Isle of Burke from How to Train Your Dragon. And they're, they are relaunching the uh, Flesh and Blood version of How to Train Your Dragon, like a reboot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not down, but at the same time, I love the movies. And then there's a place called Celestial Park. And this looks truly like we have one of those a Tomorrowland. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right smack in the middle uh, of the, the city. So Celestial Park is going to be a Tomorrowland, uh, but kind of more focused on entertainment, uh, food, and shopping. Hmm. And then they are expanding the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So it's already pretty big in Florida, but they're making that okay. Even so, so, How... Tell me a little bit more about Celestial Land or whatever. So it's you said it's like a Tomorrowland. I can't tell you because yeah. it's sacred. Oh, stop it. I mean, I guess I did make the joke about getting my garments at Costco. But anyway, um, so it's it's kind of like their world so, of tomorrow, right? Yeah, basically. So it looks like they have a roller coaster that's it's called Stardust Racers, mm-hmm. and it's a race across the cosmos. So it really, it's kind of really stealing from Tomorrowland, but like, it's good. Well, I, I was going to um, say, like, that actually is something that Disney needs to get up, like on because... Yeah, they don't. Right. They have no idea what they're doing with Tomorrowland. Like, take Star Tours, move it to Galaxy's Edge, or just and get rid of it. Re- but I'm not going to start that <laughs> oh, argument over again. I, okay, not again. Don't disagree. It's time to move on. Walt never intended rides to be permanent. Yeah, that's true, right? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is either move it there or or make something, com- you know, comparable. So. Or just give know. us yeah. the third attraction in Galaxy's Edge that you've been promising us. Or even just a smidgen of the interactivity and the world development that you've been promising us rather than scrapping it all and putting it into your failed hotel that you never even finished. <laughs> okay, here we go. I, I, you feel like a <laughs> jaded Disney pass holder right there, man. <laughs> I've only been once in the last 10 years, and I'm jaded, okay? Honestly, they well, there's, there's a lot that I could talk about with Tomorrowland, especially getting rid of Nemo. They should just get rid of the lagoon. Yeah, they really should. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, we're going to make that a, a bonus episode. We really should. How we'd rebuild Disneyland. Or <gasps> Tomorrowland, even. Bonus yeah. episode this month. Okay, we'll save it. Yes. We'll save it. Okay, guys. Um, Josh, with all that, I, I had another thing, but we're going to save it till next week. Okay. The other show is generously supported by our friends of the show on Patreon, especially by our friends with benefits tier. These friends are contributing $25 a month or more. A huge thank you to KP Brown, the other Brit, Jonathan Vascar, Mrs. Robinson, Brandon from Popfly Cards, and the one, the only, Chris Anderson. To become a friend of the show and to support the other show on Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash the other show. Contributors can receive both weekly and monthly bonus episodes, exclusive swag, along with other perks and benefits. Once again, visit patreon.com forward slash the other show to join. You just listened to The Other Show with Kent Dunn, Josh Hansen, and Spencer Myers. The Other Show is produced by Kent Dunn, Josh Hansen, and Spencer Myers. Show design and auto editing by me, Josh Hansen. Sales manager, Spencer Myers. Please rate, review, and subscribe to The Other Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, or wherever podcasts are found. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X. To better connect with us and other fans of The Other Show, join our Facebook group, The Other Group. 
for past episodes, links to our other shows, and to shop for show swag, visit theother.show. And remember, when you're not listening to me here, you can hear me on my other show, The Party in the Back. You can hear me on my other show, Bacon Cell. And you can find me doing lines with Winnie the Pooh.